everybody, this is Lisa from K9 Clips, and this is Sandy, and Sandy's going to help me demonstrate how to groom a Pomeranian cross. So um, Sandy is crossed with a Bichon Shih Tzu, but she's got more of the Pomeranian type fur, so she does have an undercoat. Um, so I have done well, the one side of her, the uh, one stage, so she has had a bath, and then this is how she came in, nice and full. Um, it's hard to brush comb through this fur because she does have an undercoat, which is very thick underneath. Um, I don't know if you can see, but it's quite clumpy. So it'd be, it would almost be impossible to brush out for me because I don't have anything um, other than these metal combs. And that would cause a lot of irritation on the skin for her. So I do not do that. So um, what we have been doing with her, and she's been cut many times with me before is that we do um, groom her down but the owner tries to keep her as long as possible as uh, I do as well because uh, it's always nice to have a little bit of fur especially on any Pomeranian you don't want to shave them right down unless you absolutely have to um, the fur on a Pomeranian will all depend on them how it comes back usually it'll come back and it'll be a little thicker um, but it always comes in nice um, when they get older sometimes, sometimes it does thin out and comes back patchy. Um, but when they're younger, it comes in nice and thick. Um, I find all the ones that I have groomed, um, the owners are, well, the dogs are quite happy because they're quite a bit cooler and there's no uh, shedding for the dog uh, because they've gotten rid of all that. So this is a number five. I tried go a, a blade longer, but it would not go through the fur before on the other side. So this is what we're doing, a number five. So basically what you want to do, let's try to turn her, is as you go, just kind of get underneath the undercoat. It'll catch a little bit, and then you just keep going. And I always go with the body. You don't want to go against it. You can, but that'll make the cut a lot shorter. So in the back of the leg, I always go upwards because it usually is quite a bit thicker there. So this will make it a little bit shorter in there. Just be careful of the armpits because they have a skin when you do extend it. The skin underneath it also extends, so you got a little bit of armpit skin <laughs> there that you want to be careful of. Usually I'll go back and I'll trim that with a number 10, because you want to make sure you do not catch that skin at all. And that area is basically always proning um, to uh, matting as well, so that's a, it won't matter if you do trim it a little bit shorter. It's tucked underneath there, and it is prone to um, matting anyway, so then that way it just helps prevent that from coming as the other hair grows out. So I have bathed her, and uh, so her hair is a little bit damp right now. So I'm not trying to do a perfect cut. I'm basically just trying to get all the bulk off. When you're going along the side of the body, you want to go alongside uh, parallel to the ground, not up and down because it will make some lines for you, especially when they have an undercoat. When you get closer to the bottom and it curves under, you can do it then. But when you're up here, you kind of want to go um, front to back. And then that'll help prevent any lines um, which kind of or grooves, I guess, from the clipper blades. When I go underneath the belly, I kind of tug the hair and pull it out so I can get that.
And please comment or ask any questions if there's anything you'd like to see differently or if you have a request of a different breed or a different haircut on a dog. I, I most likely have a dog that has that cut or has that um, medical condition or um, behavior uh, that I can help assist um, in showing you my technique how to hold them without restraints. I never use restraints. I never have in my 15 years. I just learned techniques to hold the dogs and um, so that they will, I can groom them without any restraints, I guess. And then as I became more comfortable in what I'm doing, of course the dog becomes more comfortable. Um, with the dog being damp as well, it does help keep the blades cool, but you always want to keep checking them to make sure. Okay. And then uh, under the bum area, usually I'll go one blade shorter. So I'm gonna go to my number seven. And with that noise, I'm gonna add some oil. You can hear it speed up there. That's just a sign that it may need some oil, especially when you're working on a damp dog. Um, the oil tends to get used up a little bit more. So usually I'll just start a little bit up from the bum area. And again, you're being very careful around the bum area, not to make sure you get those in there because they are very pointy and sharp. And usually it will be a little bit more matted under here. I guess not necessarily matted, but the undercoat will be thicker. And then I'll come from the sides and behind um, to clean that area up too. So again, if, and if it is matted in here, which it, it, it can be, I'll use a number 10, which is the shortest blade, just in that area. And there we go. All right, so the tail, I did the comb out before I bathed. And then once you give a blow dry, you you tend to uh, brush out again. And just kind of layer it that way as it goes. And when I'm doing the feet, especially um, when you're worried about the rest of the body staying longer, you just kind of blend it with the body. So you go out from there. And kind of round them up so I'll go up from the top as well all right and then around the ears all this trim in there And trim around with the scissors. Kind of blend it, okay? So on this side was the one I just did. This is the one I did before. So what I will do, so you can tell the difference just from the first cut and then to the second one. So after I blow dry, I'll come back again. So after I do the initial cut, I'll come back again and I'll blow dry it. And then I will use the blades once more just to clean up anything that I may have missed. So again, I'll just kind of see what I missed. And you can kind of just go again on the dryer fur again. And it just kind of takes just a little bit off just to clean it all up. So you're actually doing two cuts on the dog. And there we go. So there's how you do a, a full groom on a Pomeranian cross. And I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see. Um, subscribe to my channel to see more videos like that. I'd appreciate it. 
I appreciate your time and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.